All right, you guys. I'm so excited. I have Marissa here. Marissa, man, we've been through it today, haven't we? Yes. Yes. <laughs> so I'm excited to have Marissa on. Okay, I kind of want to start this new thing where we do like Spitfire questions just to okay. get things going. I'm first of all really thankful you decided to chat with me because right now it's like 5 p.m. Right. So we're yeah. both like <laughs> it's like end of the day vibes. Um. So to get things flowing, first of all, Marissa, you're located. How far are you from Miami? I'm in Miami. I'm in like the thick of it right now. Okay, in the thick of it. She's in the thick of it. <laughs> what is your best recommendation for what to do in Miami? I know that's like a loaded question, but my best recommendation, I would say you have to go to the beach and like okay. it doesn't matter. It doesn't have to be South Beach. Actually, I would prefer not going to South Beach. Go to any beach. Really? Why not like, South Beach? South Beach is just like overrated. First of all, oh, okay. it's going to take a lot. It's, it costs money, like $20 or so or more to park there. And it's mm. just like always crowded and like just craziness. So I would say find a like more chill beach. Like I like South Point, which is like south of South Beach. And okay. like, yeah, there's so many other beaches other than South Beach. So definitely okay. check it out. Yeah. Got those. What about the food in Miami? Oh my God. Uh, Miami is like a, a foodies, like wonderland. Like I love <laughs> trying all the new foods and stuff. Um, you can't go wrong with like trying out one of like the fancy, like David Grutman restaurants, like from Groot Hospitality. There's Komodo, Sexy Fish, all those like famous like air, yeah. um, restaurants. So that's like a whole experience. Oh my gosh. Wait, I need to hear about, so I know I was all like, okay, I'm doing a rapid fire session, but like we need to catch up. How was your bachelorette? You went to Miami, right? Yeah. Yeah. How was it? It was, it was fantastic. All my girlfriends like from all over like Texas, um, Oregon, my sister flew from the other side of the country to come all the way down oh here. God. Yeah. It was, uh, it was really nice. And we got a yacht, we went out to eat, we did all the things. It was just, it was so much fun. Yeah. Okay, wait, I have a question. So I'm going to get into it, of course, with like the whole um, wedding planning and all of that, because you're like leagues ahead of me. But like one of my concerns with like bachelorette parties, not concerns, but it's always like, it's like a lot of blending of friends and stuff. Mm -hmm. Like, do you have any advice for like making a cohesive, good bachelorette? Or is it more on, I guess, like the person planning it? Honestly, I had a, I had the same fear because like yeah. all of my friends are like from different like groups of like parts of my life like high school, college, like my family, like back home. So it was kind of just like a little bit of everything. I wasn't sure how everyone would like mix, but everyone like got along really well. I I think what's important is to, like for you to be at the the center of it because everyone's there for you, right? So but I hate doing, that. <laughs> I know, I know. Me too. I'm like, I don't want the spotlight. But like, as long as you're doing something that you think like that you enjoy and that uh -huh. you think your friends would enjoy, I think it's a good time. And honestly, like going out to dinner is such a like a nice way to kind of like just kind of break open, you know, break the ice and uh, get to know each other. So we did a lot of like sitting down and eating and talking to each other, like not too many things that involve like uh people having to do you know like drinking or whatever like they don't want to do that so we, i try to like have activities that there was something for everyone and everyone can kind of just like hang out what's like a good act example that's the word example yeah. <laughs> um so the very first night when all the girls came in to town we had like a girls night in and we just like watched like trash tv like all those like netflix shows like um, like the too hot to handle, like yeah. whatever, like the, the dating shows, we just ate like food and had like a spread here and just like hung out and just got to know each other while we were still waiting for all the girls to come in and like played games and stuff. So I thought that was a good like icebreaker for the weekend. Oh my gosh. I love that. I honestly, one of my favorite things, I'm such a lame person. Cause I'm not like, I like going out once in a while, but I'm not someone that can go out like multiple days in a row. Same. My favorite. <laughs> yeah. Especially I feel like once you turn like a certain age, it's like, yeah. that's not the vibe anymore. <laughs> um, but I love like sitting down and playing like, you know, those card games where you get to know people more, like we're not really strangers and like that kind of stuff. Yeah. 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 Like yeah. I like like the deep chats and like, or like even the silly, like, I just like, like the card prompts. Yeah. Like what do you mean? And, yeah. Like, yeah. What uh, do you mean? Against humanity. Like those are all super fun. And I feel like anybody can like, kind of like pick up the, like the rules on a game and like play yes. it. And it kind of just like creates that like fun uh, energy. So. Yes. Like I don't like games where like it's a little too complex. Cause I yeah. will be the first, like I will, I do not understand rules <laughs> yeah. at all. No one else. There's too much. No. There's too many hours that go <laughs> I'm like, you want me to manage money? Like, this isn't a game anymore. This isn't fun. <laughs> so just to get started, one of the things that made me really excited to chat with you is I know that you have like the coolest job ever. You guys, Marissa has the coolest job ever. She's a clinical wellness pharmacist and she gets to work in like the sports medicine realm. What does a typical day look like for you? Yeah. Um, 
so this is always hard because like I feel like no day is the same but mm. um, I do I have like a hybrid work environment so a lot of the things I do from home is like uh, project management um, a lot of outreach t- talking with people networking um, we are working with some really cool like vendors and like the health and beauty space so I do a lot of um, calls with them and then I do have days in the clinic where I go into the sports medicine clinic and we work closely with the Miami Dolphins physician and we essentially follow their patients and we get to see um, athletes, retired um, sports athletes, people who come in for any kind of like sport related injuries, things like that. Um, It's really neat and you get to see things that like you typically wouldn't see in like a normal, I guess, like clinic. Um, and we get to offer them lifestyle type of modifications and recommendations. Um, we talk about supplements, like, uh, taking like a bathroom, uh, uh, oh my gosh, uh, <laughs> Epsom salt bath. Yeah. I wasn't saying bathroom salt. No, that doesn't make sense. <laughs> Epsom salt. salt bath. Um, stuff like that, like, like you wouldn't really typically recommend that right off the bat, but depending on what their needs are, we talk about different, like things like sleep and nutrition, exercise. Um, it's really interesting and I love it because I come from a sports background, so it's very much up my alley and it's like a combination of my passions and my education. So it's, it's my, like my dream job. Oh my gosh. Wait, I love that so much because I feel like traditionally, like people always think of pharmacy as like only one type of role. Mm -hmm. But I feel like the more that we learn about medicine, the more we learn about how important it is to have a pharmacist pharmacist on your team. I just feel like this is such a good example of like one niche realm that like people don't really associate pharmacists with, but I'm sure that you help so much with. What's it like kind of being the pharmacist on the team in the sense that like, is it similar to other types of roles where you can like round with the doctors when you're like learning about all of the patients um and also do you ever like when you're working with the vendors what does like the role actually what is your role actually like as the pharmacist working with the vendors yeah yeah so the for the first part of the question so ours is more like clinic based we work specifically with um specific physicians who want a pharmacist in their office. So Got it. we're still kind of onboarding other physicians who like, we have actually quite a few people who have reached out to us and we're like, oh, we're gonna need to hire more people because <laughs> we cannot do this on our own. Um, and we work directly with the physician. So um, if there's a specific person he wants us to see, then we'll follow them Got it. Um, throughout their care. But the, you know, we kind of look through the chart and we see like people who we think would be good people to um, have an intervention with and talk to. We don't really necessarily do rounds. We kind of just like look, it's kind of more like an ambulatory care setting where we kind of oh, like okay. have a list of patients. We can kind of look and see their history, what they're there for, and then um, talk to them based off of that. And then the physician we work with, he's amazing. He's very innovative. He's all about like all the health and wellness and prevention type of things. So he gives us plenty of time to like talk to them. Um, do you work with PTs too then? We do. Like on team? We do. Yeah. Athletic, uh, also athletic trainers. They work right next to us, uh, medical assistants. They kind of, they'll go in there and like, t- like scribe. And, um, he has like students who are also there and fellows. So it's, it's a really unique team. It's a whole bunch of different people, um, which is really cool. And I love working with like a, a interdisciplinary type of team. Yeah, that is so cool. And then in terms of like, so what do you do with the vendors as like a, from a pharmacist perspective? Yeah, so um, I can't really like disclose any like, it's okay. <laughs> specifics on who we're working with, but we're trying to be really innovative and offer some really, um, I guess, more technology type of offerings for our patients um, and things that kind of go along with like uh, health and wellness. So if you can think of like wearables and things that you might see in a pharmacy, but you don't typically see in like a health system pharmacy. We're trying to really bring that on because we have patients who ask these questions and they want to know like, how can they help like manage their, um, you know, their conditions. And there's all these really cool opportunities for us to have like add-ons and that supplement like their therapy. So um, basically I just kind of like reach out. I shoot my shot, so to speak. (laughs) (laughs) I find a contact if I have a connection on LinkedIn or something, or if I just, um, there was one company, I just literally found the business email and they got back to me very quickly. And so just kind of setting up the stage saying, okay, this is what we're doing. We're trying to make this kind of offering. Would you be willing to set up a, a call so we can just talk about what that would look like? Um, so it's really just kind of saying that this is the value we can provide as a pharmacist and what we're looking for, like looking to provide for our patient and then seeing if they'd be open to that conversation. So 
Wow, that is such a cool and also like really important actually role for a pharmacist because if you think about like the future of where healthcare is going, I feel like people always say it's going towards like wearables, like AI and that kind of stuff. Mm-hmm. And like the backbone of like how pharmacy was developed, I feel like is like helping our patients like learn about over the counters and learn about yep. um, using their insulin and all that stuff. So I feel like as like the actual technology is evolving, like wearables, like the role of the pharmacist will just like keep evolving with it, mm-hmm. which is super cool. I wish like more places did that because that's honestly yeah. like I don't hear too much about it. I'm sure if I would like looked into it, I would, I would find more roles. But that also leads me to my question too like how did you find this opportunity yeah I feel like um it kind of in a way found me um what someone I know well my he's my boss now but I was connected with him (laughs) someone (laughs) I was connected with him uh from school the school that I went to school pharmacy and he had posted about um like clinical wellness pharmacist and I was like oh like what is that and this was during my fellowship where I reached out to him and I was like you know, can you tell me more about this? This sounds really interesting. And then uh, later on down the line, when the position actually became like a real FTE and like they actually had the funds for it, um, he reached out and he was like, hey, are you still interested in this role? We have this and I feel like you would really play a a big part in this. Like you kind of fit all these criteria we're looking for. And so we had that conversation and kind of like just talked about it. And I, you know, leveraged the things I did at ASHP and my background and and health and um, all of that, obviously pharmacy and my MBA as well, because they were looking for some business development since this is a new role, we're creating new service lines and stuff. And that's kind of how it just came to be. And it's really cool because it's it's brand new. We're still developing it, still growing every day. Something new is always popping up. So I'm really enjoying it. Oh my God, she a pioneer. <laughs> you pioneer that is so cool yeah it's honestly so refreshing to hear just all these stories about like how we can organically create jobs because i was kind of like talking to you off air before about how like one thing i felt that was slightly different in comparing like my job experience finding a job experience in dentistry to um like hearing my friends trying to find new jobs Mm -hmm. is just that like sometimes it feels like you're looking at what's out there and you don't really see something that fits you or what you want. And I feel like this position was like made for you. So it's like an excellent example of how people can leverage like just their community, like not necessarily, um, like you don't have to like march up to a hospital and be like, Hey, make this job. Like it all just starts with knowing the right person. Right. Exactly. I felt the same way when I was like trying to figure out what my next steps were. And I was like, I just don't see like what I want to do. Yeah. And it kind of just all happened and it took time. Like, cause you know, originally when I first talked to him about it, it wasn't ready and it wasn't actually like developed or anything. And then it was literally like months later until we were actually able to have that conversation say, look, now it's, it's here. Let's talk about it. Right. (laughs) What do you think? Like, so looking at your day in like a snapshot, what is a moment where you're like, God, I love this job. Like, like what are your favorite little moments in the day to day? And then what's like a moment where you're like, this is tough. (laughs) (laughs) I would say, um, so going back to my, um, Epsom salt bath. <laughs> I don't know why I could not say that earlier. Um, it's so- okay. I, I forgot the word example. So, <laughs> so we were, um, we were talking to a patient, uh, somehow we came into, I think he was having some kind of leg pain and he was talking about, um, how he regularly exercises and he needs something to kind of help him relax. And we, um, had that as a suggestion was an Epsom salt bath. He came back two weeks later because he was still experiencing some pain in like another area, but he mentioned that it, the Epsom salt bath, <laughs> I don't know why, <laughs> he, was, he mentioned that the Epsom salt bath was actually very helpful and he felt relief from it and that he wanted to keep doing it. And he said, you know, he would never would have thought of that as something that he could just like pick up when he goes to the grocery store and like, you know, try that at home. And so something like that was like one of the first times I was like, oh my God, like, That was such a cool, like, intervention that we made that we talked about. And to hear that it's actually working for someone was, like, just such, like, a warm feeling in my heart. I'm like, okay, we're here. We're doing it. We're in the right place. (laughs) Yeah. Oh, my God. That's so sweet. (laughs) Yeah. And I would say to compare it to, like, something that's difficult, I feel like, you know, when you go into any kind of, like, corporate job, I feel like my administrative duties are, like, my corporate side um, you, you, they always make that joke that nobody knows what they're doing. Yeah, there's yeah. just so many things that come at you and you're like, okay, like, how do I do this? There's no prototype. There's no, nothing like I have to go off of. You kind of just have to like run with it. And so that's kind of like scary, just like not knowing like 
what to do or just like being uncertain about like what's the correct path and like you can't just go to your boss every time you don't know something and be like hey how do i do this so you kind of just have to like find that confidence do your research and like do things on your own and it's just like being comfortable with being uncomfortable so i would say that's like probably the most difficult part you know hearing you talk about that aspect of your job like you must have had to definitely face like imposter syndrome because it's one thing to be like a new grad pharmacist at like CVS where it's established and you know people have done it before you. But like I said, she a pioneer. So like, <laughs> like how have you really gotten through those moments of being like, okay, well I need to get it together. Like, do you have any sort of like pep talks or like anything you use? Yes. So I actually went through this really hard last year when I was in my fellowship position. Um, Cause like you come out of school and you graduate and you're like, I have my doctorate. Like your family thinks you're like the best thing in the world. Like yeah. you're about to go out here and like just save lives. Right. And then you get there and it's like, literally you're working with people who have been in your job and their job longer than you've been alive. And it's like, so wow, true. like I'm very inexperienced compared to all these people. And so it kind of just like, you know, it kind of shakes you up a little bit, but then I had to really remind myself, like, I'm meant to be here. Like they didn't give this job. They gave this job to me because of I'm qualified to be here. And I did all the things I went through all the school, all the training. I did everything. And something that I tell people, and this is something I did at the beginning of my fellowship is I wrote down everything I did. I was like, okay, you know, graduated pharmacy school. I got this scholarship. I did, you know, all these different things. And it's kind of like my, my list of like my accomplishments and things that I really feel proud of that I did. And I remind myself when I'm like, you know, feeling like an imposter, I'm like, okay, I did all these amazing things. Like I really am meant to be here and be in this room. And so it's just about a matter of like reminding yourself and like trying to find that confidence and, you know, really give yourself that positive self-talk. Cause like some people are just if you're anything like me, like critical about yourself and whenever you like, you feel like you're messing up and you just want to be perfect and you can't always be perfect. It's not going to happen. So just trying to have that positive self-talk is really important. It's so true because I feel like when we're in the moment, it's kind of really hard to take yourself out of like that and see things big picture. But like when you do, like you said, and remind yourself, like there were times I didn't know I could make it through pharmacy school. I didn't know I would be able to get through fellowship and find a job. Like, I feel Mm -hmm. like that's so powerful is to like remind yourself that if only we just had more like intentional time in our day to day to do it a little bit about your fellowship. So you were, I want to make sure I get this right. So you were an executive fellow Mm -hmm. in, uh, for ASHP, which for anyone listening, that's not familiar. It's the American society of health system pharmacists. It's like one of the biggest orgs in pharmacy. Um, and like in particular, you were a fellow in association leadership and management. Mm -hmm. so that is just like a lot and like i was watching your vlog on your youtube she has a youtube channel by the way um you can like drop it once we finish the episode and i'll have it linked but i was watching a vlog and i just thought it was so interesting because this is a position that i never knew about i've never heard um you mentioned too that transitioning from like being a student to being a pharmacist fellow was like one of the difficult parts of it. Could you just elaborate on like that and the feelings you went through? In this position, um, like you said, ASHP is like a well-established organization and I loved working for them. Like it was a dream come true. Something I didn't even know was possible like in pharmacy school. And then when I learned about it, I was like, this is perfect for me. I was like, (laughs) I love organizations. Like I was the uh, student government association president in pharmacy school. So like it was very similar to a lot of like the things I was doing when it came to like creating policies and like advocating for the profession and all these different things. And so I really enjoyed that. And then, um, getting there, it's kind of difficult. Like when you, like I said, like you jump from being a student and then you graduate and they're like, okay, like you're on top of the world feeling like super great. And then you go into, instead of going, it's like a full-time role, you're going into like a trainee type of role. And so you still feel like you're kind of like that student or that you have something more to learn and it's great like we're going to be forever learners where that's where that's healthcare everything is always evolving but like it's just kind of hard because you just you feel kind of like out of place for a second and you're like dang this is so different from like what I was doing and that you feel like you have so much more responsibility having like you know the credentials now and all the stuff it's like they're really having like high expectations for me and so um you know, that was just kind of hard to kind of, you know, find at first. And, uh, for anyone like in that kind of situation, I highly recommend finding a mentor, um, and like 
you know, creating that relationships with people like who you work with that you look up to that can kind of like guide you along that process really makes a big difference, especially when you feel like you just kind of feel like you stick out and you're like, what, what, where do I go? Like, what do I do? Right. Finding that person who can be there for you and kind of like help you through like a new period of your life will make such a big difference. What was like a really good piece of advice that a mentor or someone that helped guide you there taught you? Yeah, I would say, um, and I, I guess it goes back to like the whole imposter syndrome thing was, you know, I, some, I was talking with somebody who I'm still talking to today, saw her a few weeks ago and she was like, Marissa, you are here. Like you are meant to be here. And she kind of like was that person who reminded me of, mm. of that. And that's what I had to continue to tell myself every time I felt out of place. And she um, was really like that person, like my champion. And she really just like believed in me and helped me like believe in myself again. And, and it was really helpful for me, honestly. Oh my God, that's yeah. so sweet. Yeah. While you were there, you were talking about how you work on different projects. What was like a really memorable project that you worked on? I would say, um, oh my gosh, I worked on so many different projects. I would say the guided mentorship program. This was a really cool project because it stemmed from the ask from the, the DEI, the Diversity, Equity and Inclusion Task Force. They wanted um, a mentorship program for kind of geared more towards persons of color. Uh, so any students who are interested in a specific field of pharmacy, let's say ambulatory care, they would then be paired with someone who's an ambulatory care pharmacist. And then for, I think it was like a six month time that we had them do this, we helped guide them through this relationship. So it wasn't just like a, hi, here's this person, you know, never talk to you again. It was like a, here's this person, you're gonna have this like commitment of, you know, working together for six months to build this relationship and they can help you through, you know, um, creating a CV or any type of, you know, professional development that they might need. And we gave them prompts and all these different things and like how to be a good mentor and how to be a good mentee. And we had so much positive feedback from it. It just like made me so happy. I was like, oh my God, like I love that. Like people said they were getting like letters of recommendations from their mentors because they really like just had such a great connection. And um, yeah, I just loved the fact that we were able to bring people together because I knew when I was in pharmacy school, I didn't have a mentor. It was hard for me to connect with people who were um, senior to me and I was just doing so many different things. And so to have the opportunity and be able to give that to other students, I think was really special. Oh my God. Wait, that is like so cool. One of your projects was literally just like facilitating like mentorship. Cause like when I think of like leadership and stuff like that, honestly, there's so much that I don't really understand or know that my head just thinks like, okay, boardrooms, uh, <laughs> like briefcases and suits. Like, I don't know really what's going on uh, over there up there was, in the big, <laughs> there was some of that too. Yes. <laughs> For but, sure. but hearing you break it down, I'm like, oh my gosh, that's like so personable. And like, it makes so much sense then how you can like, if you have even more projects similar to like that, how I guess this, this program really helps teach you more about those things like managing people, leadership, all of that. What is a skill with like a leadership skill or a management skill that you learned while you were there? Like something that you witnessed in action or something that someone taught you? I would say probably like project management. And like, I don't know if that's a good example. But for me, I, I'm used to dealing with a lot of stuff. I feel like a lot of students are, you know, juggling multiple things at once, but like this fellowship took it to a whole new level. Like there were times where I was working on like 10 plus projects. So it's like a matter of keeping track of what I'm doing, what my group is doing, um, keeping in constant communication, um, updating people, remind, like sending out reminders, like, you know, having action items, like setting a meeting, like, I never had spent so much time like writing an email and like <laughs> making sure it looked like her. circling back. <laughs> yes. <laughs> there was just so many things that like, I guess just like technical skills that I never really like, I maybe I just overlooked and it really gave me that appreciation to learn how to be like a professional and do multiple things at a time. Like leaders deal with so much stuff and to see how, they communicate to each other in person, mm. virtually. Um, however, it's just really neat to see all the different types of communication. Like some people come and they drop something off in, in front of you. Some people want to talk on the phone really quick. Some people prefer you just set up a meeting and if they don't have any time, it's going to, you're going to meet with them in a couple weeks. Like it's just so interesting to see all of that and how that worked. And I feel like 
like, I'm just so happy that I had that experience because it's been really helpful in my role in creating all the things that I'm doing. I have a question. So let's say you're, you're in a big organization and you have to send an email to like the big guy. Mm -hmm. the, the the big cheese, the head honcho, yeah. <laughs> and you want to get his attention. How do you craft a really good email to someone high up when you're like a lowly person? <laughs> or I mean, even if you are like a higher up, but like, how do you craft a good email that like they're actually going to read? I always get someone to look at my emails that are like important like that. So drafting something and being very straightforward to the point when you're okay. emailing somebody who's like really important, they don't have time to check their email all day long if if they even do check their email because some people just don't check their do it. <laughs> interesting that's good to know and they have like someone who does it for them so they're like we'll filter it out um so being as sim like simple in like your words as possible like straight to the point you don't want any fluff you want to just like be very clear in your messaging um again having someone check your work to make sure that the point is coming across that you didn't mess up anything or misspell anybody's names that's important Oof, yeah. um <laughs> and just to be like direct with like whatever your ask is or um whatever you're trying to say so mm. yeah i mean my the thing about working at ashp was the communication there was great and a lot of most leaders are pretty good at getting back to you and things like that, but sometimes people are just so busy. So um, as if you can just be clear in your messaging, I think that's the biggest takeaway. How about like conflict management? Because I'm sure that that like comes up, um, especially when you're managing so many different projects, so many different people. Like, mm -hmm. how did you kind of see that handled? Depends on like the situation of like what you're doing, but mm -hmm. when it comes to like any kind of conflict in like the workplace, I always think it's best to like talk it out with that person or with whatever is going on just to like have a conversation about it because things can get lost over email which is why i was saying like clear communication is, is very key but even still like words can just look so construed based off of like you know it's different from receiving a text where you have like emojis and exclamation points and gifs and all this fun stuff but mm -hmm. when you like have an email it can feel very like like just straight in your face like they're yelling at you or they're like dissatisfied with whatever you had to say um so i i think what when that something like that happens just to talk to the person say hey do you have quick 10 minutes we can chat so i can just make sure we're on the same page or something like that that way it's just clear from there um, you know, it's, it's really hard to talk to people through email sometimes. <laughs> <laughs> no, I know. It's like so interesting. I would love to learn more about like human studies and how we've kind of evolved because I feel like with communication, it's like we have, we went from like emails and now also we have like video communication, like TikTok and like mm -hmm. visual, all that kind of stuff. But I feel like our, our attention capacity is definitely diminishing. Yeah. So it's interesting to see how like people are going to evolve and like find new ways to do like email and like that kind of stuff too. Right. When you were transitioning from fellowship to then finding this job and like, well, I guess like meeting the person that would become your boss, mm -hmm. did you ever explore like other options or was this kind of like the first job that you found right out of fellowship? I explored a ton of options. Um, I was at a point where like, I didn't know exactly what I wanted to do coming out of my fellowship. Like I had an idea, but there was just so many different things I was thinking about. Like, you know, I was getting engaged. Mm. I, what, am I going to move back? Cause at the time me and my fiance were living separately from each other. So it's like stuff like that. You also have to think about, um, and you know, what do I want my like work life balance to look like? So there was just so many, like I looked at quite a few different opportunities and, I received a lot of no's like unfortunately you know i'm i'm great on paper and all these things like you know but that's just life you're gonna receive no's and it can be very um it can make you feel a little sad in a way and yeah. you're just like oh like you know maybe you really wanted it but um every closed door is honestly like that means just something better is coming for you it's another opportunity so um yeah i, I definitely looked at other other places to see what happened and honestly i was moving from dc to florida and that's when i got the call like hey how are you what's going on and so like honestly it was just pure faith like i knew something was coming i didn't know what it was but i knew it was going to be good and um yeah i just kind of had to trust the process on that one 
it's kind of crazy because now that I like see what your job is today, I'm like, oh my gosh, there's like this job was like made for you. Like the other jobs like wouldn't even like compare. Right. Like I feel like I'm like that's like crazy that you ever like felt sad about missing out on those jobs when like this job would end up being here. Yeah. Um, yeah. Do you have any advice then for, let's say, someone that's in the pharmacy field or like in any field, really, and like they want to get out of their current situation, but like maybe they don't have that mentor or someone with the opportunity yet? Mm -hmm. I still like really believe in like putting the vibes out there. Like, how do you think, let's say someone has a sports medicine clinic near them and they want to mm -hmm. do something similar to you? What are some like good points that they can maybe bring or like, you know, like, kind of advocate for like the role of the pharmacist or whatever? Or just, yeah. how do they get this job? <laughs> yeah, absolutely. So... I feel like um, one thing they need to do is, um, you know, you want to definitely play up on your experiences. So, um, like, I have, like, a sports background and things like that and, like, health and, and wellness. And obviously, like, the PharmD or whatever healthcare experience this person may have, um, definitely talk about that and what you can provide to them. And then if you're able to identify any gaps that they may have, um, that's always, you know, a really good place to talk or really good topic to talk about. So for example, um, we're having a, like we're doing physicals in a couple of weeks. I'm not doing them, but like the, co the coach, <laughs> the physician is doing them for the coaches on the uh, sports team. And, um, that's a great opportunity for pharmacists to do medication reviews and take down their med list, see what they're doing and, you know, see if they have any questions, if they want to meet with a wellness pharmacist and go over some, um, wellness type of uh, questions. So um, providing like value is like the biggest thing that they can do. Um, if they have any other experience or opportunities to get any kind of training or cert certificates, um, that would also be very beneficial because that just like, it's kind of like another credential. It's another thing mm. that they bring to the table, another skill that they have that'll make them kind of stand out. So I love hearing about like different patient populations like that people don't necessarily get exposure to. For example, I had Rudy on and she was telling us all about like student health as like a student health pharmacist. What's it been like working with just like an athlete population? Because I've never worked in with athletes or anything like that. It's really interesting because we kind of see all different types of people um, we'll see anything from like, um, like high school athletes to people who are in college to professional, like the NFL, um, even retirees and stuff. That's like that. really cool that you see the retirees yeah. too. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. And I'm just like, Oh my God, it's like it's starstruck. But, um, yeah. no, it's, it's really neat because everyone kind of has like their own, um, mindset and the way that they come in to treat their, you know, whatever it is they're coming in for. And so to be just like open to how they perceive things, because some people don't want to, you know, go on any kind of medication and some people want to try out different options. And so being open to what the other options are is really important. Um, we do a lot of like prevention. So if they know that they're going to have a competition coming up and they know that like, say their shoulder is going to be like super sore, like you might want to take some ibuprofen before you go and you play your game because it's just going to help with the pain just a little bit, like, you know, cause it's going to be really difficult. So talking about different things like that, um, and just seeing like what they're comfortable with is something really important to think about. What is, what is like the most common, uh, injury or complaint that you get from your patients? We see a lot of like back pain. Um, shoulder pain is also very common. Uh, we do a lot of like x-rays on like shoulders and um, knees. Knee pain is another one that we see is pretty common. Mm. Um, yeah, a lot of just like muscle type of injuries and musculoskeletal type of things. Yeah. You know what scares me is like back pain because I feel like back pain is one of those things where like, you know, sometimes you have a cold and you regret all the times you didn't have a cold. I feel like when you yes. have back pain, you're like, oh, I miss the days I didn't like if you ever sleep on your neck weird or your back mm -hmm. weird. Like, yeah. I just feel like the back muscles are all just so intricate. I don't really know much about it, but I feel like if you mess up something, it is it harder to pinpoint than if you just mess up like... um. Like, if you mess up a finger, you know it's this finger. But, like, right. the back, I feel like there's so much more going on there. There there really is, and that's kind of where the whole, like, working as a team comes into play because, like, the athletic trainers are 
definitely more um, aware of like the different type of like muscle groups and all these different things. Like they're always teaching me things. I'm like, oh my gosh, like how cool. Yeah. Um, and then like, you know, the other things like doing x-rays and ultrasounds and all these other um, diagnostic things that they do. They have all these different like uh, movement type of, um, I guess, exercises or I don't know, I forget the word for it, but they do these different tests on them, I guess, to see like what their range of motion is and all these, um, it's just really interesting. Like, it's just so different from what I'm used to. And I think it's really cool because it's like, I love learning and I love like seeing new things. So I, I don't remember what you're, <laughs> no, it's okay. <laughs> you totally got it. <laughs> Honestly, it was more of a tangent. I was just like, back pain scares me. That was it. <laughs> no, it scares me too. Yes. Yes, it does. <laughs> you're like, in conclusion, we are scared of back pain. <laughs> wow. It is like so cool. Honestly, like hearing about this role just because it really inspires me for like not only people that want to do sports medicine but it's like if we can have sports medicine pharmacists like think of like all the different roles that we could have like we could i don't know there's just so many other fields that we could use us for so kind of switching gears a little you have a wedding coming up when is your wedding march 25th oh my god wait that's We're... like literally a month yes how do you feel i'm feeling I'm feeling good, but sometimes I get like a little panic. Like yesterday I woke up and I was like, I'm fine. And then like by the end of the night, I was like, oh my God, I have this payment that I have to pay at the end of the week. And like, just like, <laughs> I was like, oh my God, there's so many things I have to do. But then like this weekend I had my bachelorette party. I was like, I'm so excited. I'm so oh. happy. So like it like ebbs and flows. I think it's just a matter of like me keeping track of my to-do list more than mm. anything, but I'm so excited. Like, it's going to be a great day. Um, it's going to be one of the happiest moments of our lives. So I'm, I'm just happy for that. Oh, my gosh. Is it also, is it in Miami or are you guys going anywhere? So it's going to be in Texas. Um, my fiance's family is from Texas and then my parents live in Texas. So, yeah, it's going to be a nice little Texas wedding. <laughs> Did you grow up in Texas? I I grew up, well, I went to high school in Texas. So, yeah, high school and then my undergraduate degree in Texas. And, like, that's where my parents live. So I kind of say, like, I'm, it depends on the day. Like, I'm, some days I'm from Texas. Some yeah, days yeah. I'm from, you know, the Midwest, whatever. It's it's fine. <laughs> if you're, it's like if you're in Texas, you're like, oh, I'm from here. And then if you're yes. like. <laughs> exactly. Exactly. <laughs> but in this whole wedding process, wedding planning process, what have been your do's and don'ts? Like, things that you've learned? Oh, yeah, that's a good question. So do sit down and like make the decisions with your partner. Mm. Um, like, you know, at the end of the day, it's about like you and your significant other, right? So whatever you guys want to do, and you should talk about it between each other before you talk about it with somebody else. Got it. And a lot of people are going to like just give you unsolicited advice, opinions, whatever. And they're gonna be like, oh, you should do this. You, should, you, you got to just say, you shake your head. Yep, yeah, that's a great idea. But you don't have to do anything that anyone else tells you to. Like, make sure you're making those like big decisions with your partner because you guys want to be happy at the end of the day, like with what you decided on. Also, do come up with a budget. That should be like one of the first things you talk about with each other. How much are you willing to spend? Why are you spending this much? Who's gonna pay for what? Um, you know, they say traditionally, I guess in America, is like like the bride's family pays for everything like that's not always the case like you can literally just like open it up and a lot of times like the families just like want to contribute so mm. definitely like open up that conversation have a budget in mind um, and you're going to want to budget for like every single thing you do because whenever you talk to a vendor they're like oh how much can you pay so <laughs> <laughs> you're like excuse me <laughs> you're like oh <laughs> yeah and like um wedding prices girl yeah. prepare yourself <laughs> No, like literally, that's why everyone's like, have you planned yet? I'm like, do you think I have the time or the money as a student to do anything? <laughs> it's, it's a lot. Um, yeah, it's a lot. But, you know, it is it, it is really fun. And something I've been doing is like been trying to document it. Like, um, I'm going to be posting more on my YouTube, hopefully, Please, like, with some yes. vlogs and stuff. So because I think it's just like so fun. It's like a period in my life I'm never going to do again. And to be able to look back on the memories and like share like what I did to hopefully help other people. Um, you know, it gives me some joy and like, uh, one of our cousins is actually getting married, um, this weekend. That's why we're, we're going to Texas. So, um, to have people to like talk to you about it with is like so much fun. Yeah. Oh my gosh. See, like when you say it that way, that sounds like so much fun because like, I feel like the fun is in like the details and like the planning and the getting to basically like host and like everyone that you've ever loved, like everyone kind of coming together. But I think the things that like stress me out, at least personally, 
about even like the thought of starting to plan a wedding is just like oh my god like i want to make sure everyone is like okay and having a good time i don't want to hurt anyone's feelings and like weddings just seem like the ultimate like like choosing bridesmaids um seating arrangements it's just yeah. a lot of social messiness i feel like it is it is and i'm right there with you like for a while i was like i don't think i want to do bridesmaids because i don't want to pick between my friends like i said like all my friends are from like different areas different stages of my life and i did end up deciding like yes i'm going to do bridesmaids because i'm like i'm only getting married once i want to have the experience and you know almost all of them told me they're like this is the first time i've ever been a bridesmaid oh. and they were so excited and they were like I don't know when I'm ever going to get this chance again. So I was like, oh, the tears. I was you're like, like, oh my God. <laughs> you're like, this whole time I wanted you to be a bridesmaid. <laughs> yeah. And, so, and another piece of advice I was just thinking of was like, someone told me your wedding day is going to like reflect how you feel in that day. So if you're going in there super stressed, like running around hectic, that's how it's going to feel oh. for everyone. Everyone's going to feel like, oh my God. Like, you know, what can we do for the bride? Like, she's like, you know, but if you're having the best time of your life, just enjoying it, going with the flow, like people are going to feel that and they're going to feel happy and they're going to just like, you know, their, your mood is going to literally like radiate off of everyone. So that's why I'm saying like prioritize like what you and your significant other are wanting to do because you want to be happy and just like in the moment enjoy yourself I imagine a lot of that like being able to just be in the moment is because of like planning too though right yeah. like is there yeah. certain things that you plan ahead of time that you think are going to save you time on the wedding day um absolutely like so I have a wedding planner um because I am living in Florida while my wedding is happening in Texas oh, I was like yep I was like I need someone who is familiar with everything and um she's been pretty good and so a lot of like the wedding day stress and like planning is going to be s heavily relied on her because <laughs> i don't want to deal with all the questions about everything so um yes planning is is so important and i feel like the more you prepare the better it'll turn out but i mean you know enough you also have to expect the unexpected so just like if something does happen try not to let it ruin your day because mm. At the end of the day, you're with, like, the person you love, right? And that's, like, the best thing that happens. Yeah. Right. I cannot wait to see, like, photos and videos of everything, too, when it comes out. You have to please post more. <laughs> please post more on I your will. YouTube. I will. <laughs> um, let everyone know where they can find you on, like, Instagram, YouTube, all that. Absolutely. Yeah. Marissa Brooks. That's that's it. And I can send you my handle and everything for you. Mm -hmm. Yay. Awesome. Well, thank you so much for recording with me today. This was so much fun. <laughs> yeah. Thank you, Connie. This was awesome. And thanks so much to everyone for listening. That is all we have for this week. Uh, I'll see you guys next week. Bye. <laughs>